I guess the boundaries first. So Ukraine is roughly the size of Texas. And so when I went there, the Kiev mission was the country was split in half and I had the western side. Now there are my mission was split in two again, so there's the Lviv mission. But for a while I was there, it was roughly half the size of Texas, and it was the western side of it. And I'm pretty sure if within a month or two, maybe, of the collapse of the Soviet Union, I think church leaders went to Ukraine and um, blessed the land for missionary work. And... Um, there's currently one, at least one, there's one stake when I was there, one stake in Kiev, and there are districts and branches scattered throughout um, Ukraine. And I think there are, well, at the time I was there, 11,000 members in Ukraine uh, out of 50 million people, the total population. So um, I think we're one of the fastest growing churches there. And... Um, the predominant religion is Orthodox, is the Russian and Ukrainian Orthodox churches. And everyone, their grandma went there, their grandpa went there. And so they have this strong tie to that church because when we would ask younger people who really necessarily didn't go to church, we would say, are you kind of a religious person? And it felt like to me, nine times out of ten, they would always say, well, my grandma went to the Orthodox Church, so I guess that makes me Orthodox. And there is also, you know, Catholics, um, Greek, Greek Catholics as well in some places. It was really interesting to see that. And there's also a lot of Jehovah Witnesses, and I don't know about other countries, but it, it seemed that the Jehovah's Witnesses also wore white shirts with ties. They looked just like us, and they would always carry these little bags, and everyone mistook us for Jehovah's Witnesses. And so we were kind of butting heads with them a little bit just because apparently um, the Ukrainians had a negative um, attitude towards Jehovah's Witnesses and so they would show um, a negative um, attitude towards us because they mistook us for them but other than that yeah it, definitely the Orthodox Church is the predominant church there. And I served in four cities in my mission each about six months increments counting the MTC. I served in Kyiv and I served in Odessa. Those are one of the two biggest cities out of Ukraine. And then the other two cities I lived in, I served in were smaller capitals of the counties, like the official city of the county. There is actually some, a really cool story about sure. you know, the, the history of the church there. Um, I remember I was in one of the smaller areas. Um, I was talking with the we were talking with the branch president one Sunday, and um, he said that he went to a uh, a meeting of leaders and just of church members that he was either the uh, a former mission president was there or a general authority was there, and the topic of the twelve um, the the ten tribes of Israel, and um, they would say one by one each tribe, and um, slowly. Every uh, every tribe was represented in that building. I mean, in that room, and it was really interesting to see. Like, the leader would point out because there were missionaries in that room at the time. He said, "See, this is why we're here: is to bring back bring back Israel together and to unify it." And so that seemed really interesting because here you'd see everyone is from one or two tribes, and it's the it's the norm. But there, everyone was from represented all the 12 uh, all the tribes of Israel and so it was really interesting to see how in that part of the world that there's just people that come from different walks of life and how we are being we are in the um, we are on um, the hands of the Lord um, hasting the work and it was really interesting it was that hearing that story was really cool like wow I really am making a difference I'm helping people come back to Heavenly Father and understand that there is more to this life than just, you know, living and having a job and just like enjoying life through the fullest, like through entertainment, worldly things. So there are four missions in Ukraine. If you kind of like split the country into quarters um, vertically. So there's, um, well, with the current political events, there's currently only three. But um, so the four missions in Ukraine, Lviv, Kiev, Dnipropetrovsk, and Donetsk. Um, there's 
only the Lviv mission, which is on the furthest western part, portion of the country bordering Poland, um, is the only one that has Ukrainian-speaking missionaries. And the other three missions, all, everyone is called Russian-speaking. So I didn't even hear any Ukrainian or um, at all till my last area, which was very as further up north in Poltava, um, kind of, it was the closest city in our mission to Kiev, and that was where I, that was the only area where I ever heard any Ukrainian. So there is a temple, the church is going, if you look at, um, so the first missionaries got there um, in 19, like end of 1990, very beginning of 1991, can't remember exactly where, um, and they, had originally come from like they're part of a different mission there was no mission there and then so then they sent in a few missionaries um the first missionary is actually there he was um a like russian ukrainian by birth but he'd grown up in australia and so that's where his family joined the church and so he was called and they like sent back and so they had like nothing like there was no branch there's no anything they were just like them they put them in the capital and so if you look at from where they were like if you look at the growth of the church in the first 20 years from like first missionaries touching down to like 20 years later, um, Ukraine and Russia, like the Eastern Europe area is actually like the fastest growing, um, at least in time. That's what they had told us that it was like the fastest growing area in the world. Like, so from where they were with like from zero to the first 20 years, it's like more than the Philippines or Brazil or South America. Um, which is kind of amazing to me because I see where all those places are now, but still see like how, you know, when you go to church and there's 15 people there in this little branch, like how young the church still is. Um, but there is a temple there. The temple was announced in 1998, but it wasn't because of legal things and working with the government it wasn't actually finished being built in 2010. Um, and so I was in the MTC doing the temple dedication and on my way home from like on my way home from my mission, I was able to spend a day in the capital and to spend a day at the temple. Um, but there's, so there's a temple there. It's one of the most heavy used temples um, in the world. So it's like pretty much every session is full. And it's like, it's always, people are always, I'm amazed at the sacrifices that people make and how often they try to go to the temple. Um, but there's, in the country itself, there's only one stake in the capital. Um, and even like in the Nepropetrovsk mission when I was serving there, there was a district, which is like a smaller stake made up of only of branches, um, but they hadn't, um, then uh, after I'd been out for about a year, they dissolved the district um, to try to put more of the leadership in the branches to help them out. And so there's, everything is just under the mission president. So he's kind of has to act as the mission president and the stake president. Um, but he, yeah, so the church is, is still very, very young and there's, a lot of like I served in a branch presidency um, and it's you know kind of the point now where it's it's getting now that there's a lot more people who have gone on missions who are coming back from their missions who are you know native members they you know native to Ukraine and Russia there's a lot more strength than you know people have, having just a lot more experience because there's actually people who have you know were baptized when they were four or their families were baptized when they were four or five and they got baptized when they were eight and or they were even born in the church and now that they've like been born in the church and have actually grown up around the church they're starting to be this whole new generation of people who've grown up and seen how the church runs instead of you know there's like i know my first area the branch president was made the branch president like less than six months after he was baptized he was the branch president and then he had to and he served as the branch president for a decade and so it's you know going from that where it's these people who haven't grown and you i think you kind of underestimate how much you see just how the church works just growing up and hearing about your parents going to different meetings and you have to seeing different things and working on different councils and organizationally you know to oh, here's this council of people who are trying to run a branch or trying to organize these things and they are, have only been there for, you know, they've been a member for two months and it's now they're trying to take on this huge thing. It's very, it made me very appreciative to under, and kind of gave me understanding into church history and, you know, how the early saints, um, you know, how they're just kind of like 
trying to figure it out as they go and try to see, okay, that didn't work. Let's try this. Okay, this works. Like this is a good activity that people respond to. Like we'll try doing that and just trying to, you know, just trying to really fly by the seat of your pants to figure out how things should be done. Well, I was there. Kiev was the entire western half of Ukraine, whereas now Kiev has been split into the Kiev mission and the Lviv mission. Um, there is only one stake in all of Ukraine and is in what is, I guess, now the Kiev mission. Um, and there's a number of wards and also branches. The majority of the mission is taken up with, with branches, and they're very, very spread out. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, you'll be, there'll only be two companionships for hundreds of miles. Um, or occasionally just, there's just one companionship in one city, um, for some reason or another for, for several hundred miles. The mission had its, I guess you could say it was this at its peak of growth in the nineties, uh, shortly after the fall of the Bur not the fall of Berlin Wall, um, I guess, kind of. Um, after Ukraine separated from the Soviet Union, and and all of a sudden there were all these different churches that were allowed to come into uh, Ukraine, whereas before all they had was the uh, Orthodox Church, or as you will come to know it if you go there, um, the Pravoslavny Church. Um, that was all that was there. That's all these people have known for forever, hundreds of years. Uh, Pravoslavny Church has been the, the primary church, other than atheism, I guess. Um, and so all of a sudden, all these people were really excited about all these churches, and, and the church just kind of exploded for a while uh, there in Ukraine and in Russia, but mainly Ukraine. Ukraine, uh, Kiev, Ukraine, Mission particularly, um, has been the highest baptizing, I believe, uh, mission in Eastern Europe for uh, quite some time. Um, we do work there. That's that's why the first first uh, stake in Eastern Europe was in Kiev. Um, nowadays, uh, things have slowed down. They're not, you know, at a, at a standstill by any means. But um, a lot fewer baptisms than they used to be. Um, uh, activity is is lower than other parts of the world, but you still have do stalwart, amazing members who have been going since the beginning and they're just, they, they, they remember what it was back in the days when there was, you know, no religion besides the Pravoslavni church and they, and they, and they love it. They will do anything for the missionaries. Um, there are some very amazing uh, members, um, there. Um, and they will all want to feed you. Um, everybody, all, all of Ukraine wants to feed you for the most part. If they don't hate you, they want to feed you. Um, if you go into someone's house, there's a good chance that you will be fed, even if it's only key and tea, tea, tea and cookies. And be aware that there is good tea that we can drink in the mission. It is in Russian, I don't know what it is in Ukrainian. It's called fruktovy tea, which is essentially flower or fruit tea. Um, just no black tea, no green tea. Um, there is often, especially in the smaller branches out in random regions, there is a struggle for uh, priesthood. Um, if you are serving in one of those branches that is far from the stake, there's a very good chance that you'll be serving as an elders quorum president or a counselor to the branch president. Occasionally, you will be the branch president, though um, that may not be the case in any of the missions anymore. Maybe they've, they've finally gotten enough priesthood to not have to worry about that. It just depends. Things can change. I served in the Kiev mission from August 2013 through the end of November 2014. And um, there are several areas in the Kiev mission, so it covers the city of Kiev itself. So there's a stake and several branches that are in the city of Kiev, which is the capital of Ukraine. And then there are several branches outside of that area. Um, do you want me to say which one? Like, what are they called? <laughs> so there's an area in the north called Chernigov. There are two areas just west of Kiev called Zhitomir and Vinitsa. And there's an area south of Kiev called Cherkasli. And there's a place called Bilat Serkva. And then in the south, down by the Black Sea, there's the large city of Odessa. And there are several, several small branches down there. And so it does encompass a very large area. Um, one thing that's unique about the Kiev mission is that 
it's sort of in central Ukraine and so there's sort of a cultural divide in Ukraine where the western half of Ukraine is very Ukrainian where people speak Ukrainian they're very um, in touch with their Ukrainian roots and then the eastern half of Ukraine speaks Russian and they I guess they're I wouldn't say they're as, as I don't know, as Ukrainian, I don't really know how to say it, but so de they definitely speak more Russian than the East. And so my mission sort of lays right on top of that boundary. So you get a mix of Ukrainian speakers and Russian speakers. And so I spoke Russian on my mission, but a lot of things were in Ukrainian. All of the signs are in Ukrainian, everything in grocery stores is in Ukrainian. Um, in sacrament meeting, a lot of the, sac the sacrament prayers will be in Ukrainian, the hymns are in Ukrainian. If you serve in one of the western areas, probably all of church will be in Ukrainian and most of your meetings with people are in Ukrainian. <laughs> and so it sort of just depends on where you serve. But yeah, so that was definitely interesting where you, you feel a cultural divide even in your mission. So there is one temple and it's in Kyiv and it's very special just because it's the one temple that serves pretty much all of Eastern Europe. So there are people that come in from so many different countries to attend the temple. So the people in Kyiv and in Ukraine consider themselves very blessed to have a temple there. And um, let's see, the attendance and the numbers just depends on the area. So for example, in the churches or in the wards that are near the temple or in Kyiv, the city itself, they have many, many members. So I'd say sacred meeting attendance is somewhere between 100 and 150 people every week. Whereas in the areas that are outside of Kyiv, it's sometimes 30 people, 40 people, maybe even less, just sort of depending on the week. So those areas are definitely, they definitely have fewer members than in the city of Kyiv itself. But the religious feel is interesting because it depends on the generation of the people that you teach. So many of the people of the older generation either were raised to believe that there is no God and they're not very open to the idea of there being a God or they are Russian Orthodox or Ukrainian Orthodox. And that's definitely the predominant religion in Ukraine. And many of, so they consider themselves Orthodox, but they don't really attend church or really practice their religion. And so that made for very positive experiences and, and also difficult experiences where people are a little bit unsure of their faith and so they are searching for something because they have this new freedom where they are allowed to believe in God and the government isn't really restricting that on them but at the same time some of them aren't really sure how to believe in a God. One thing that's actually pretty cool about the church history in Ukraine is that so the church hasn't been around very long in Eastern Europe and so once um, the Soviet Union um, I guess dissolved I would say um, Ukraine was, had much more freedom and so the missionaries were able to proselyte in Ukraine and in Russia. And so it makes for very interesting experiences because most of the people that you speak with, you are their first contact with the church. They've never heard of the Mormon church, they've never heard about anything. So it puts a really awesome responsibility on the missionaries because you are the, their very first contact with the church and so it I don't know, I guess it just made us feel like we really needed to be friendly to these people. We really needed to love them and have them have a really good first impression of the church. And what I've heard is that from, so from the beginning when the church was just beginning to grow in Ukraine, it was growing very quickly. And as people were like receiving their patriarchal blessings, they found that like most of the 12 tribes of Israel are represented in Ukraine and in Russia as well, which is really unique. And so they are a people very, very prepared for the gospel. And so you hear that some of the people are unhappy or that they are not as smiley, but that's just their culture. But they are a very, very happy and loving people. 
Tea is definitely a very strong part of Ukrainian culture. Everyone, whenever someone comes over to your house, you give them tea. And so that was definitely a struggle that people had. Um, in the men, I would say smoking and drinking was definitely a problem. And with regard to the law of chastity, I think some people just don't see the importance of having a legal marriage where they, people will live together and they don't really see the point in having a document representing their marriage. And so they're committed and once they understand the importance of the law of chastity, they are willing to get married and follow that commandment. Um, I would say that getting people to come to church was, from what I've heard, easier than like in some other places just because people do love feeling the spirit. They're a very spiritual people and they're very sensitive to the spirit and so people really loved coming to church and they loved the feeling in our church buildings versus the feeling of or the feeling that they had in other church buildings. They felt like it was comfortable that they could sit down, that the music was beautiful, that people were friendly and they loved that feeling of interaction with other people. So people always generally had a positive experience at church and they were very prone to come to church very often and progression toward baptism was slower, but there were people who would just come to church because they loved it. So I spent most of my mission in a northern area called Chernigov and it's about two and a half hours north of Kyiv and so it's on the border of Belarus and Russia and so I spent seven transfers of my mission there. I loved it. It was, it became my home. I really loved it and I served in an area west of Kyiv called Vinitsa and so there there was a lot of Ukrainian language, a lot of Ukrainian culture. So. That was a big contrast from serving in an area in the north that bordered with Russia, so it was very Russian, lots of Russian language, and then moving to an area in the west where it was very Ukrainian. And then at the end of my mission, I served for three transfers in um, the city of Kyiv itself, just right on the very edge of Kyiv. And so it was called Svitoshinsky, and it was the area next to the area that was in the temple region, so it was only about a 15 minute bus ride from the temple. So it was really cool because every time we would go to the church with meet with to meet with people, we would see the temple on the way. And so that was a really special experience because it was, it was a ward full of people who had been in the church from the very beginning, who were among the very, very first members of the church in Ukraine. And so hearing their stories and hearing about how they really were the pioneers of the church in Ukraine was a really, really cool end to my mission.